So thank you, Roger, for inviting me to be part of this panel. And it's great to be working again with Letty and Deirdre, who I've known online for a long time. And now we got to actually meet in person and talk as well. Um, my focus here today is going to take this from sort of the next stage. I kind of feel like we're moving closer and closer physically to the user um, in that my focus is working at a university library at the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign, which is a research extensive university in the United States. Um, we're research, 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 and then occasionally we remember to say, oh, and teaching is really important too. Um, <laughs> so what I'm gonna do is say how we have attempted to articulate and operationalize a user-centric framework of principles for library service development really thinking of discovery as a service as opposed to necessarily a tool, product, or web-based something. I'm actually the coordinator for information literacy in our library, but since 2003, I've had some sort of leadership role in the development of our discovery strategy, starting in 2003 with chairing a task force that said, hey, we should probably implement one of those open URL things. Um, and most recently now serving as co-chair of what we are titled our discovery and delivery strategy team. As a side note, I'm also a doctoral student in global studies and education, which is an interesting sort of way to reflect on our library as well, including that I hear how faculty coach students about the way that they should approach their research. I wanna give you a little sense of our content context. Um, we are a distributed and heterogeneous information environment and also very large. Um, we spend more than six million, $16 million a year on collections. We have almost 800 databases, 92,000 online journals, 13 million volumes, 24 million items, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. In other words, we have an immense amount of content available directly to our users, and then of course we have the open web. In addition, our users are voracious consumers of information as well as library services. We on-site have three million visits per year to our library facilities, um, 110,000 requests for assistance, almost 30,000 of those coming through virtual means. We educate directly 26,000 learners in the program that I run of direct instruction et cetera, et cetera. I'll point to you 8 million downloads of content, 150 million views of the library website, 5 million OPAC searches, uh, et cetera, et cetera. My point being here is that no matter what number you ask about our library, it will be big. No matter what number you ask about our campus, it will be big. So what do we do in this content? context that we live in. I'm gonna start at the end because I think you need to know the context of our discovery decisions and then I'll tell you how we got here. We have what we call locally our easy search system. It is a locally supported broadcast search, search assistance and recommender system. It is decidedly not what is currently on the marketplace as a web discovery tool or a web discovery system. It is not a central index. It does not provide one set of results. It is truly, in a different parliament, a federated broadcast search. We have developed this since 2006. It's been live to our users since 2007. It is a single search box on our library gateway. That's where the the similarities between, say, EDS, Primo, et cetera, and Easy Search diverge. <laughs> so there's a single search box. Um, we have two different kinds of display, what we call classic and bento. We'll take a look at those. We have subject-based portals as well that run off this platform. We also have the ability to create a personalized Easy Search for a particular person. It is also the platform upon which our group information productivity tools, GRIPS, has been developed in our College of Engineering. It also provides search assistance. In addition, as we transfer the search into the native interface in order to give the results back to the user, we manipulate and transform the user query into an optimized version of the query for the target database. So if a user puts in a full author, first name and last name, and targets it against Web of Science, 
we will correct that for them to only be the first initial in order to optimize the search for Web of Science. The system writes out customization, custom transaction logs that we can therefore look at. Um, and as I mentioned, we're developing a second interface. So just to like, make sure we conceptually have in mind, this is what it looks like on the library gateway. This is what your first set of results will look like. It's a table of contents coming back to you, and this is the default set of databases that you will have be searched. And an interesting little side note, um, actually Bruce Hederick at JSTOR said to me, wow, we saw your JSTOR numbers go way up at this date. He's like, what, you know, we're puzzling through, and I looked at it, I was like, oh, that's the date we added it to the default search on, J on Easy Search. Like, so this, Real estate <laughs> is very valuable um, if you want our users to be using your content. Um, if a user clicks and says, I'd like to see the bento display, this is currently the in development bento display, it gives you similar results, but brings forward the top hits in each database, brings forward the full text PDF if we can find it in that database, and it also does some attempt over on the right-hand side to say, here are subject databases you might like, and other resources say the subject librarian for yours. So this is a full library discovery approach. Our approach with this has been to be evidence-based as possible and to be user-centric. Um, and so we have insisted, although we will listen to what other librarians believe about these, we are always looking back to the data to say, is this the way users use this system, prefer to use this system? We first had a web scale discovery system implementation team, and now we have a discovery and delivery study team. And at this point, I wanna make sure to give a thank and call out to all my colleagues who serve on these committees, particularly Michael Norman, who was my co-chair on the web scale discovery implementation team, and Bill Michaud, who is currently the co-chair of discovery and delivery with me. <clears throat> so how did we get to this place? Over the last two years, we've actually taken an even more intensive user-centric approach to this. Um, but one of the things is we went back and read all the reports we wrote to ourselves <laughs> as we attempted to implement a variety of different tools over the years. So in 2005, 2006, our library had attempted to implement WebFeet. I say attempted, so you know where that went. <laughs> Easy search is actually the result of our decision to not deploy web feet after we had it up and running and had tested it. We then began developing and deploying Easy Search, and we've written reports on the status of this number of times over the years. We also subscribed to Primo for a three-year period of time and implemented that, which we did at one point have live for our users, although we never replaced our single search box of Easy Search with Primo. So now we always know these reports when we write them, but we wanted to go back and look back over them and say, what can we learn about our strategy by what we have keep saying as we write these reports? And these are the four things that our library values when we are implementing any sort of discovery system. So first, transparency in how the system operates. Second, predictability and explainability. It's very important for us to understand how the system works and then be able to predict that it will continue to work that way and that we can explain it to our users. <clears throat> we prefer to be able to customize things um, and if we are in a relationship with a vended product, we like co-development opportunities. So we are an unusual library in this way. We will rarely be willing to take something out of the box and not insist that we wanna change it in some way based on what we know about our users. And I wanna thank, just generically, a number of vendors over the years, commercial partners who have really worked with us to optimize their systems for our users. The other thing we did was to go back, and I received a grant to reread all of our user surveys that we have done since 2004 about what have our users told us for 12 years about discovery. And there were some wonderful things to go back and read about our library website in the 2004-2005 uh, 
the grad student who was reading it was like, they were really mad. I was like, oh yeah, they were. She's like, why? I was like, let's go look at the website in the Internet Wayback Engine. She's like, oh, I see. Okay, so what do our users value? They value seamless digital delivery. So I want to be really clear that the most important thing for them about discovery is delivery or access. They want coherent discovery pathways. They want to understand how to work through this amazing riches of information that our library provides. They're very clear that they want things as simple as possible, but not simplistic. So while they would want a single search box, many times they would add, but I also want to be able to. So simple, but not simplistic. The other thing is, as we looked at this, it became very obvious to us that when they said, I want everything, they didn't really mean everything from a library perspective. They meant everything from my perspective. So I want my everything, all the databases I might be interested in. They weren't really asking me as an art historian to make sure that the inspect search results came up in their data set. In fact, that was not what they wanted, okay? Um, they wanted transparency as well, and then our users also expressed a great desire for independence. They wanted systems that would support them in being successful as researchers and not dependent on someone else. Finally, we have an amazing wealth of EasySearch custom transaction logs. EasySearch records user actions, the system suggestions and use thereof, search reformulations as people redo their search based on hits and tips that they might have, as well as what the user clicked through to. Which native interface did they go off to? In 2010 to 2011, we took 1.4 million searches and 1.5 million click-throughs and did some sort of big data-like analysis on them. In 2014, we studied 1.17 million searches, 1.2 109 million click-throughs over a 12-month period, which was almost a million searches by the time we sort of took out things that shouldn't have been in there. Um, and from that, we took a sample to code much more detailed. I also need to, of course, give the shout out to NSF and IMLS who funded some of this. In addition, we have previous work on OPACs where we've looked at um, the results that are ambiguous and how web search behaviors are different than the way people search in the library. So I mentioned that we ended with about 900,000. Um, one thing that's interesting that we discovered is that our users actually do a fair amount of searching by clicking on a particular tab that we offer them on the gateway. So that notion that users would prefer just a single search box with everything in it, you can see that we have sizable numbers of our users choosing just to search for books, or just to search for articles, or just to search for journal titles. In addition, um, we know that they don't all start from the library main web page gateway. Um, a significant numbers of them do, but there's also quite a few that choose the advanced search, which is where you can choose then some additional features and functions. We also offer portals on many of our subject library web pages. There's, I was actually surprised to even see this many searches being done with My Easy Search because we don't actually have that in production, which means anyone that we've offered this to is sort of a like try this out is using it intensively. Um, we also see that in a significant amount of time, users are using the search suggestions that we provide. So they are using something that we've said, hey, your search could actually be better, or did you mean that? Um, it's not an insignificant percentage of people who are doing that. So just a few of our findings, and I think it's interesting to juxtapose a few of these with the more general findings. Um, again, the number that used a search assistant, uh, assistant suggestion, we noticed that Upwards of 60% of these search sessions are just, they do one search and they go off to a native database, which of course you can do the reverse. There's about 43% where they do multiple searches within EasySearch. 
Um, and we have this example here, 6% contains six or more queries um, with 96, literally 96, containing more than 50 queries. I presume that's a graduate student doing research for a faculty member where they are been told, go find all of these articles. We see a lot of changing user behaviors around query search length and what we think, and around known item searching. So in 2008, our analysis showed that our average words for query was under four. We're now at over five. 10% of our searches are one word. Um, and then there's another about 15% that are greater than eight words. 50% of them coming in one to three words, okay? So um, this was interesting for me to hear about the Google Scholar and the level of precision of the searches they're seeing, because in our case, 50% of our searches only have three words, and that's probably not enough to be super precise on what someone's looking for. Known item searches are growing rapidly from 49% in 2007 to upwards of 60% in our most recent analysis. The other thing we can tell is that there is a huge per number and more and more of what we call the cut and paste search because there's like all these volume numbers and page numbers and other things that people are putting in. That's actually helpful to us if they happen to like copy in a DOI, we actually reformulate their search to just be that DOI because we know that's actually what they wanted. Okay, so where did this all lead us to? Um, it feels like so, such a lot amount of information analysis. Um, so besides the principles that we had of how our users want and what we want, we've really identified that these are the six tasks of users that our discovery environment and service needs to support. Locating a known item, locating a known research tool, like a specific database, exploring a topic, identifying and accessing tools for a topic, identifying research data and tools. That's perhaps a very research intensive university need. Um, and then identifying assistance. Now I wanna be very clear that I don't mean referring them only to the reference service. I mean computer-based support and assistance there. So all of that came together in what are our discovery principles. The library in user workflow requires personalization and customization. Generic searches that are based only on keywords are not sufficient. We don't have as much of this as we'd like yet, but that is what we know we need. We also know that our users want full library discovery. They want content, services, and spaces. Um, they want the fewest steps from discovery to delivery. We actually want this principle to say discovery is delivery, um, where there would be no distinction for the user. We also believe that everything that we own, license, or provide should be discoverable. Um, as a library that has a lot of historic materials that have never been cataloged, and I can assure you they've not been digitized, this is a major issue for us, that we have to get these things even online in discoverable way. We also decided that we really have to fully deploy and develop fewer tools. There is a plethora of tools that we could be doing a little bit with, and we really needed to commit, and so our commitment at this point is to easy search. Um, we know that we need wide-scale implementation of adaptive and contextual assistance. So we need the user to continuously receive assistance as they're doing their searching. Um, we've worked very hard to move towards consistent language and labeling. So a PDF is called a PDF, it's called a PDF. So we're rewriting those in our interfaces as much as we can. Um, and also finally, we need to provide the greatest discovery and delivery at the lowest cost. Because if you know anything about being funded by a state in the United States these days, public higher ed, our budgets are not going up. And so we need to squeeze as much value and discovery for our users at the lowest possible cost that we have. So we have a development and sustainability plan. Um, 
OCLC threw a little wrinkle in this for us with their change from first search to WorldCat Discovery, so that is now in Easy Search as a target. We've programmed applets for WordPress and widgets for LibGuides as two other uh, platforms that are in heavy use throughout our library. We're further developing My Easy Search because currently if you want a My Easy Search, there's a step in the process that says, email this URL to Bill Micho, and then he personally rewrites it and emails it back to you. Probably not something we can use as the approach to 40,000 students and 10,000 researchers. Um, we've implemented a mobile responsive view for Easy Search Bento, and we're developing subject-specific Easy Search Bentos. At this point, you can only have the classic view. And then the final thing that we are always doing is monitoring the commercial options um, to see whether there are things that, you know, maybe, maybe the marketplace will provide at one point, but at this point, for our users, it's not. Um, we are... Um, really happy to share everything that we've learned. And I discovered I was tired of emailing citations. So there is now one URL, which is a portal to all of the publications, presentations, data analysis, and the like that we've done about our 12-year process, where you can go there and download those results and get in touch with any of us who have done this work. Thank you very much.